Hello, this is Dr. Alex Vernon, and this is a little training to help you make a histogram in Excel. First of all, histograms are for quantitative data, not qualitative data, and they're used to show location, shape, and variation, or if you want to call it spread or dispersion, of data. Horizontal axis is an honest number line, vertical axis is frequency or relative frequency, and Excel is not the best tool for this, but we're going to go for it anyway. If you do a lot of this, get a bigger hammer. One of the things we need to know is how many classes, how wide to make the classes or the interval between the classes. And it's probably a good idea to do a little descriptive statistics of the data. I'm going to go ahead and run summary statistics of these randomly generated data. And um, I'm going to just put them right next door. C1. Okay. Now, just the summary statistics. I'll hit OK. And note, it means about 99, almost 100. We have a minimum value of 74, maximum 123 and some change. I'm going to go ahead and use the formula in the box to the right to try to get at a rational interval width. I'm going to operationalize this in Excel. Notice how I'm building this in cells. And I'm going to go in and just point and click and get the values I want. So I need 23 and some change. I need the 74. And the number of classes, I'm going to do something real rational and I'll just start with 10. I've done this before so I know how these data work. But you'll want to try different numbers of classes. You want classes that make sense in the context of the data that you have and the audience that you're presenting to. And realize there could be a lot of manipulation. So be, be careful when you're looking at histograms made by other people. So, just building the little formula. Go ahead and put in parentheses around <clears throat> the subtraction in the numerator. Dividing that by the number of classes that I chose. And suggested interval width with the formula is 4.95. Now let's use, let's use 5. I want to use something handy. It doesn't make things awkward. Now, Excel requires that you create what's called bins to tell it how to sort the data. And I'm going to start at 70 so I make sure I get the lowest value. I'm going to have an extra class at the bottom. And then just extend this 5 interval all the way through up to say 130. That's above 123.7. So there are the bins. Sort of like sorting observations in trash bins is what Excel does. In the Data Analysis Toolkit, I'm going to go ahead and go to Histogram. And the input range, you want to make sure you have the data. I've done this before, so I'm going over the top of what I've done. The bin range, and I get those and the labels, all of them. Tell it it has labels because I selected labels. Output range, I like to put this right next to the bin range. And only want to select chart output. Do not select Pareto or cumulative percentage. Just select chart. A simple setup. And here you get a frequency distribution and a histogram. Now note that none of the bars are touching, so one thing that you have to do is is click on the on the data series with the right mouse. Format that. And you click on that and it has a gap width slider. You want to make that no gap for a histogram. It should show 0%. Go ahead and hit close, and you'll note all the bars touch. There's no gap. If you widen this object out, you'll see that you get more labels to the bars because you have more room. You also need something a little bit more descriptive because you get the impression that you have, say, seven observations that are exactly 85, which isn't the truth. So if you go through, and if you take a look at the data, you can figure out what Excel is doing. But what we essentially have is 65 to under 70 in the very first class. And then the other classes are similar. I'm just going to go 70 to under 75, 80, etc. I'm not going to do the rest of them. I'm going to widen this thing or make it bigger and show you that you can see the labels. You can play with the axis all you want and try to make it look better spend a lot of time doing that. You'll note these data 
to see the highest frequencies of occurrence, the lowest frequencies of occurrence. You can see the basic shape, looks as if it could be about like a bell curve. It should be because I generated it from the normal population. But, pretty basic. If you bring this up and you put the histogram right next to the descriptive statistics, you have a pretty good descriptive um, analysis, if you will, of the X variable. You have descriptive statistics and a histogram. I hope this was helpful.